Hey there, and welcome to Bibliophiles. This is the very first episode of our brand new show that we're going to be doing on a weekly basis. And we are going to be talking to people that write books, people who work with people who write books. We're going to be talking with people on my team. We're going to be talking about cool books that have come out, um, issues about books, all those kinds of wonderful things. And each week, I'm going to interview another professional of someone who works, either works with authors, who is an author, or who works in the industry in some way. So this is all about the writing life. It's about my journey and the journey of every author out there uh, and trying to maybe bring you in to the world of writers, authors, and all the people who make all that happen because there's so much more to it than just sitting down and writing a book. Today, my guest is Krista Walker Nicely. She is a voice actor and the narrator of the latest and greatest thing that I'm doing, which is audiobooks now of the three books that are published. She did the first one and she has graciously agreed to do my other books as well. And I'm so glad because she did such a beautiful job. Krista, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bonnie. I'm so glad to have you here. And I'd like you to take a moment and just introduce yourself to our peeps here. Okay, um, well, I'm Krista Nicely and um, I've been doing audiobooks pretty much uh, full time for about two years now. And um, because I've done over 35 books, I believe. Um, started a couple of years ago, just looking for something to do um, part-time once my kids were in school and had taken some classes before in the past on doing uh, voiceover work. Um, and when I auditioned, I got my first job and been doing it ever since. I love it. That's cool. Well, you, your love for it really shows in your work. Um, I'm just so pleased at what you were able to do with this. And this is a journey that authors take. And when they start, all they want to do is write their story. But eventually they realize there's a lot more to it than that. There's so many other people that get involved with their creation. And in my case, one of the things I knew right from the beginning was that I wanted some audiobooks. I have visual issues, um, and so uh, reading is very difficult for me, but listening to an audiobook means that I don't get disconnected from all of the authors that I know and love, and it allows me to stay on top of what's going on in the um, uh, publishing world and all those kinds of wonderful things. Now, the audiobook thing, uh, was I'm still kind of a newbie here uh, where that's concerned. But when I first started it, I didn't know what I didn't know. <laughs> and so I um, tried to work with a few different people and it just didn't quite work out. Um, but then I got involved with ACX. And that process is really kind of interesting because uh, one of the things that you do is you audition people, which is, you know, um, one of those things that uh, uh, is somewhat time consuming and whatnot, because there are, even once you narrow it down to the voice that you're interested in, oh, I want a female voice, I want it to have this accent, I want them to be able to do other accents, you know, and so forth. So they give you a bunch of choices, and so they narrow it down to a pool of people. And then you have to go through and you have to listen to each one of their samples <laughs> that they posted up. And some of them have a bunch of samples from different books that they've done as well as their audition, regular audition sample. Sure. And so I went through and I went through and I went through and I went through. And when it came down to it, Krista's voice just very much appealed to me. And I liked the fact that she could do uh, creative work with the voices that it wasn't just a straight narration and more of a voice acting situation. 
So we got connected, but let me tell you one of the cool things about this is the collaboration that goes back mm -hmm. and forth mm -hmm. between the author and the um, narrator or voice actor for the book. And so, um, Krista, you want to talk a little bit about how you make that easier for the authors um, that you deal with as far as communication and collaboration is concerned, especially with a newbie like me? Sure. Um, so when I get a new project and begin working on it, um, I often ask the author, you know, what are they expecting? Um, also, if they have any information to provide to me, if there's, you know, interest, different character names that might be difficult to pronounce or especially fantasy names. Um, or places, you know, names of characters, places, or words within it. Um, so that, that's a start. Also, if there's anything in particular, this is, you know, the author's baby, the, their book, and I want to make sure that I bring their words, their story to life, kind of how they're picturing it. You know, is there anything I need to know <clears throat> up front about their, their book? And then throughout the book, as I, prov um, you know, record, record it, I like to um, I check in with the author. Some authors like me to, you know, every few chapters, provide them information, and then they can listen to it and say, okay, you switch this a little, or, you know, we really like the direction this is going, um, you know, or just, just kind of check in. Other authors, like, take the book, let me know when it's done, and then I'll check it. So it just kind of varies on, um, you know, the author's preferences. Well, I, I was really appreciative of the fact that you got back with me on a regular basis and that we were able to have conversations back and forth about different aspects of the book and, and kind of how I wanted different characters to feel and be. And I like the fact that you gave me every so many chapters, you would say, okay, I've loaded up some more chapters, go in and take a look. Mm -hmm. And I would go in and I would listen to it. Um, I admit that I had a few beta listeners as well as my beta <laughs> readers for my book who would go in and listen and, and give me their thoughts and whatnot. Um, but it was impressive to me all the different voices that you were able to use and that they were consistent through that process. You want to tell me, how do you do that? That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, there's a, there's a trick to it. So the first time a character is introduced, um, I will take um, that recording that I do, that, you know, maybe 10 seconds of the first time I voice the character, I save that in a separate file. Then when that character returns, maybe three, four, five chapters later, I listen to that before I read their part again, the new, the new part. And so then it reminds me of the character's, you know, vocal tone and the pacing. And um, if there's an accent, um, then I hear that, kind of get that fresh in my mind and then record the new dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the thing is, is most people don't realize how much work <laughs> goes into this. Everybody thinks, oh, well, you're going to just sit down and you're going to read it and then it's and record it and it's done well my, in the case of my book is 14 and a half hours of recorded material so you should have been able to get it done in three weeks right <laughs> i wish <laughs> um so the way that works when i first got your book i sat down i read through the whole thing um put on, on my ipad and i highlight as i go I highlight in different colors with different character voices, especially when there's a lot of back and forth dialogue so that when I do narrate, I can easily go, oh, this is blue, you know, this is this character, green is this character. And, um, and then also I make notes, I will circle, like if somebody said something and they were very frustrated or said angrily or, or whatever, I circle some of those keywords too so that I know how they sound, not just it's their voice. Um, so that's the pre-reading part. Then I sit down um, in the morning, typically, um, I will sit with my tablet by my computer and I start reading and, you know, I make mistakes and those have to be edited. 
um, kind of the rule of thumb is for every finished hour of audio, it takes about six hours of studio time, which is the reading and the editing and the mastering. Yeah, absolutely. And the checking back, like you said, you make mm -hmm. files ahead of time sure. about the various characters. So when you get to, oh, this is going to be Terrafowl, for instance, mm. you go back and you listen to Terrafowl. Uh, this is going to be Lilith the dragon. Well, mm. then you go back and do the amazing job, by the way, <laughs> that you did on Lilith the dragon's voice. Mm. Um, all of those things come into this and it makes it the beautiful polished presentation that it's done. And then uh, the other thing, you know, we were talking about collaboration. The other thing is, is then the author sits down and listens to all of it and makes notes. Okay, mm -hmm. I want this changed or this might be a little different or uh, let's switch this pronunciation slightly or um, whatever, especially with, I do use a lot of words that people don't normally use in everyday conversation um, and that sort of thing. And so then they send you their notes about, and now you have to go back, find that place right. in the narrative and do the editing and then come back and say, okay, I edited, it's just good. You know, so I mean, there's this whole back and forth right. thing that has to happen between the author and you, and that mm. adds a great deal to the time that sure. it takes to conclude this really cool transaction where we go, okay, we have an audio book, and <laughs> people start buying it, which is really, really good, and all that kind of cool stuff. So um, in, the, in the process of doing this and doing the collaboration and all these kinds of things, um, how does that impact um, your life? I mean, you do this from your home, right? Right. Um, so typically do my recording in the morning, um, the actual acting part, the reading, um, and then editing I do various times. Um, now when my kids were in school, not quarantined, that worked a lot better. Um, now it's been, you know, sometimes I do work after they go to bed and, and stuff like that. Um, and it just, it's, I've had to be pretty flexible uh, in order to find those quiet times to work. And um, I, I know there's a little bit, a bit of fun in, I really love the narration part. The editing sometimes can just be a little grueling. I'm hoping to eventually hire somebody to pass that off to, but right now I do my own, which, in a way is good so that I know how it's done and uh, on everything. Um, I've learned an awful lot about, uh, you know, working with audio and, and how to edit it and, and everything. But um, it's kind of a, as I find time, snippets of quiet time and time that I can work, that's when I do it. Right. And sometimes if you're like me, that's in the middle of the night while everybody else is sleeping. <laughs> That would probably be a great time. The house is quiet then. Right. So, okay. So um, we, we did this thing together. It was so much fun. Tell me, first of all, I, I, I want tips from you. Um, first of all, I want a tip on, for authors who want to do an audio book, what, what would be the suggestions you would give to them to start this process and to make it work for them? Um, first off, I would say make sure you're ready. Make sure your book has been, you know, looked over and edited well. Um, maybe even read the book out loud to yourself. Doesn't have to be, you know, to a group of anybody, but make sure it is something that can be easily read. Um, sometimes I stumble over phrases as I'm narrating and I'm like, you know, kind of what, you know, what is the author? How are they wanting this emphasized? Um, or, you know, if there's typos, those are just kind of like, how am I going to fix this? Or I check with the author. Um, so making sure the manuscript is ready to be read and is re ready for, you know, to be published. Um, 
So may, that would be one. And then another one, just check out like ACX or um, it, I feel like it's a pretty easy process to begin and um, look for narrators. Okay. Hey, now let's go to the other side of the coin because there's some people sitting out there going, you know what? I think I could be a narrator of books. I like to read books. I read books aloud to my kids all the time. Mm -hmm. How do I get started? Well, um, so there is so much free information out on the internet. Um, that would be a good place to start to find out how the process works. One thing you're going to need is a quiet place in your house. Some people use a you know, closet or corner of a room. Um, and then making sure it is treated effectively to not, you know, so the sound is not bouncing all over the place. Um, then what equipment you need. And then I would say practice reading um, out loud, practice recording and listen to audiobooks. How, you know, really pay attention to the, the pacing and the different, how different narrators narrate and um, just try it out. And, and, but there's so much great free information out there to begin. That's great. That's awesome. So um, here's the thing, you know, audiobooks are a thing. I, I actually know people who choose their audiobooks based on the narrator as much as the author which is just, you know, it just goes to show how much influence that narrators can have on the success of a book. Um, and I, I have to tell you, I really had so much fun working with you and people are enjoying the books and I love the voices that you did and, and the consistency of the narration and everything about it. It's so wonderful. And we're working on book two coming up here, but don't expect it to happen next week. We're just getting started. <laughs> Um, and so I'm very, very excited to have had the opportunity to work with Krista. And I would hope that each of you would take a moment, if you haven't had a chance to read the audiobook yet, uh, to go in there. You can go into um, Audible, and there's actually a free sample where you can go in and just listen and see what I'm talking about, how, she, how amazing that she is and, and how fun the book is. So. I want to thank Krista for being with us today. And next week, we're going to have my cover artist, Richard McKenzie, here to talk about working, authors working with artists and how that all works out. And we also will have in the future, we're going to be talking to editors, we're going to be talking to other authors. Please take time to, uh, to like and to share and to subscribe and all that kind of cool and lovely stuff. And we'll see you next time on Bibliophiles.